Uh, hello, folks. We got a bunch to talk about. I just went black on my end of the screen. Our, uh, our day, I'm getting everything fixed. It's one of those days. How you feeling this morning on a Tuesday as the NBA world begins and the Spurs world ends as the, the post-mortem interviews, the exit interviews went on yesterday. And uh, My perception of before we start here in Wimby, uh, RJ, is the uh, just the overall happiness. I've never seen a 20-win basketball team in a better mood than they were yesterday. I mean, you'd have swore we'd have just come off some kind of playoff one or some kind of win, the, the questions that were being asked, the things that were kind of going around the room. It was, it was a happy room. It um, was jovial, to say the least. <laughs> and um, I think it was... It was probably the most excited anybody who's associated with the team has been in a while outside of the, you know, obvious moments, beating the Nuggets, beating the Knicks, whatever. I mean, because it's finally over. I mean, you know what I mean? Like it's been, they've been walking through sludge. You know what I'm saying? Hey, Rob made it back on the screen. Good for you, buddy. Um, You know what I mean? Like, I don't know that it's quite Andy Dufresne at the end of the tunnel, but you know, it's almost like, um, I don't know what it is, but it, yeah, it's a weird, it's a weird euphoria to be done and to be free from all this madness and all this chaos. You know, the talk yesterday was, you know, uh, the season's done, Wimby above and beyond expectations, but here we go. And, and I didn't really expect, I don't know what I expected to come out of yesterday, but I, you know, here on Wimby talk about all the different things that uh, were involved in the, uh, in the return. I mean, in in the, the initial run. And you know what? Remember, the, the, I remember the talk was okay. We're got to be really worried about his weight and his, you know, uh, the, his usage. And you know, there's going to be lots of rest. Well, his numbers went up as the season went on. He was playing more minutes a game at the end of the year than he was at the beginning, which I think is a testament to uh, everything that they, that his crew did. They asked him um, about his conditioning and. and uh, what the biggest surprise was for this 82 game run that he had? Biggest surprise? I would say it's how well the body adapts, how strong, you know, NBA players really are mentally and physically, to, you know, to be able to to withstand the, this this intensity all throughout the season. I think the length the body can go to 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 resist. That's Wimby talking about getting his body ready. You know, there's there was so much that came out of yesterday, and we're, we're going to be playing a fair amount of all that he did all show long. We just don't have enough time. But one of my bigger takeaways uh, from him was, as we watched his progression during the year, um, that uh, you know he talked about it too, about you know you got to bring it every night. There's a there's a difference between being an NBA player and a starting NBA player. And then there's a difference between being a starting NBA player and being a good starting. And then, you know, what I'm talking about. But the greats, well, the greats, you know, they're, they're always there. They they play every night. They bring it in a way that you, you, you don't get nights off, whether you're on TV or not. Stars are, are, are stars for a reason. And uh, I think he started to learn that later on in the year, that you just, you have to literally bring your skills, your game every night, despite the team, despite the fouls, despite the refs, uh, you have to absolutely bring it. It's, I don't want to be not like really something. It's more like an, an attitude from that I see with every, I mean, with the, like maybe the top 10 biggest players or best scorers, for example, in the league. And uh, it's the way they, you know, they hear every night, every single night, there's players that, even if you check, you know, the box scores, they almost never had a like a, a bad night whole season. I'm thinking like guys like Embiid, Jokic, Giannis. It's just they're here every night and it's, you know, one doing once, doing it two twice, it's it's not enough. They they doing this for every game. Wimby post uh mortem exit interviewed yesterday. I don't think that there's anybody who when they're a kid dreams of man i can't wait to live the nba life and be load managed and, <laughs> you know and rest in yeah. you know certain moments and 
I mean, I think I think when you're a kid, you dream of like um, when you would back when 2K was awesome and, you know, video games cared about career modes and you would you would have like your apartment on those career games. You'd be like, oh, when I'm in the NBA, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to have this massive, you know, flat and I'm going to, you know, have a a whole floor for all my cars. You know what I mean? Like, that's the kind of stuff you you know, then I'm going to go every night to Madison Square Garden and drop 60 pools and whatever. And like, I mean, I don't want to over romanticize, but it, it seems like that's the life that Wimby grew up chasing. And that's the life he's trying to hold. Not, not that, you know, uh, posh, literally, but, you know, that, hey, I'm here to like play night in and night out. Like I, you know, that's the NBA and the, the professional life that I want, not this efficient version of how it's been modernized. There's, there's, you know, logic to that, obviously, that we've seen from so many different players, but it doesn't seem like what, what he's chasing in, in his own life. At 8 o'clock, we're going to hear from Devin Vassell. And he speaks to watching and, and being a part of the uh, evolution, at least the first iteration of the evolution of Wimby and how he's becoming. But, you know, as you become a Spur, the first and foremost thing is you got to play for the legend. You have to come in and play for Pop. And all that Pop has brought in. And nobody has had been more prepared to coach a guy like Wimby than Coach Popovich. And, uh, well, here we go. It's in the first year. What was it like? Uh, Wimby was asked about it. I'd say it's, you know, I mean, he made it very clear day one, like how much he cares about his guys and, you know, as people first and not players. Yeah, it's, it didn't surprise me for long because he, he made it clear day one, before day one, actually. But, yeah, it's, it's, it's just been great. And also to, you know, I know there's in so many situations in basketball in the league and Outside of the league, you know, there's the coach, the relationship between coaches and players is far from being perfect. But I'm just glad things are the way they are here because, you know, there's, you know, he's there to, you know, to poke on us, you know, some sometimes or to, you know, to correct us every time. But the way my teammates and I have, you know, have responded to all the advice, all the, the scouting reports we had to make and the efforts, the execution on the court, I think it's just, it's just been great. And uh, the, the dynamic is 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 very good. Wimby, uh, post uh, exit interview yesterday. RJ, I have a question for you. If, if you were in uh, in uh, Wimby's circle, you were a mentor to him, and uh, you were talking to him about the year. What what's the thing you're most proud of? What he did this year? What's the thing that you're like, man? Well done. I think that he he did it. Like, what, I don't think that we should lose sight of what he accomplished. I mean, mm-hmm. he came in under more pressure. I know that that is said every year, it feels like, or it's said off in under more pressure than anyone since LeBron. I mean, name name the rookie that came in with that level of not just general hype, but certainly worldwide hype. Mm-hmm. And so he came in and lived up to it. I mean, <laughs> like that's we're acting like it's this ho-hum thing. You know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah, he... He actually is this global phenom, and he actually is going to take the NBA by storm. That is an incredibly difficult thing to do. I mean, and he did it. So I'm really, you know, as the closest member of his inner circle, I'm very proud of him for that. You know, you talk about the the hype, and certainly LeBron had his fair share when he arrived. Uh, And and LeBron lived up to it, as did Wimby. I saw yesterday the, uh, what was it, the five most viewed plays Oh, or yeah. highlights and and Wimby was in the top five. It, and number one was the was that the dunk against the Celtics over Derek White, where he did kind of a Jordan one hand float to the rim, which was is still just a work of art. Um, so that that worldwide following, it's already here. He brought it. We knew it was coming. The most viewed players. This is what it was on social on NBA social this season. LeBron James, 1.9 billion views. <laughs> uh, Steph Curry, 1.7 billion views. He's number two. And number three, Victor Wembanyama. Already. 1.3 billion views. Just to list out the rest of the top 10, not uh, with their views, but number four uh, through 10, Luka Doncic, Kyrie Irving, Joker, Ant, Giannis, Tatum. Tatum's number nine. And... By the way, the, uh, well, and Kevin Durant's number 10, the only other uh, person to crack a bill was Luca, But he has the worldwide influence as well. As does Wimby. Well, Wimby was asked what he, he was most proud of 
uh, from his first season? I mean, there's there's a couple of things. One thing that I, that I just like is uh, you know having those unique um, stat lines, for example, in wins. You know, the wind that people have you know never done before, and also being leading rookies in most categories and leading the league in blocks. I'm pretty proud of this, and uh, also things like this. Uh, Wimby again uh, after the uh, post season exit interviews. He's one of one, man. So here we sit. Uh, we we know uh, where we're going. Uh, we, we you know we got to wait for the uh, lottery itself to figure out exactly where the Spurs sit. You know it could be as good as a number one or, or as bad as a eight nine or a seven eight. I think is like the worst case scenario. Uh, ideally, I think they get in the middle and only have one and let Toronto have that turf top five pick and they use it next year. But that that's really the next question that has to be answered for the Spurs as they head out. And at eight o'clock, we're going to hear from Devin and Keldon and uh, some other of the young dudes as they uh, part and spread to the winds. I, I wonder how many of them are will be uh, toes in the sand by Monday. I mean, seriously. I mean, maybe not Monday. It's still still a little chilly. You know what I mean? Even even in the sandiest of sands. You know, I think you well, there's another there's Monday. another hemisphere. That's true. Um, but no, I mean I think that this there's a little bit of you know, final days in high school, right? Like this this is for them, I think it's the days between the final day of school but graduation, right? So where they're mm-hmm. they're all kind of like still feeling the moment and still enjoying the time. And then you're right. Like there will come a a break point where it's like, well, I guess we'll never see each other again. You know what I mean? Type, you know, move on. Nice knowing you. Good luck in life, whatever. But, um, this, the season ended in a fun way, but I, it shouldn't allow us to lose or shouldn't force us to lose sight of the fact that it was broken for the significant majority of it. So as they spread to the winds, the administration, the suits, the higher ups, um, their work just begins. And here comes the draft and all that goes along with the free agency and all that. And the last time we talked with Wimby about this, about midseason, uh, he had a perspective on his role in the future and, and scouting and players. Uh, this is what he thinks, uh, well, how he will be uh, play a role in this offseason talent acquisition. I mean, will I be consulted, you know, on, on the extent that I'm a, I'm a player, you know, and they're, you know, they, they know what they, they're doing. But but the, th- the, the truth is, I don't know. It's... Um, you know, I'm still learning, but I'm ready to help as, as much as, as needed. But, of course, I'm, I'm going to stay in my role. But, yeah, I, I don't know. I think we're building something great, and it's definitely something that they've done before. And, the, like, there's many people I can I can ask for. I mean, here with the Spurs, that, that I can ask for advice on this and how, you know, how things go. I'm just curious to see. So when last we heard him, he was more of like, yeah, I'm going to play a role. Now he's kind of like, oh, I'm young. I'm still learning. I'm sure they're going to talk to me. I think it was a coachable moment before. I don't think it's uh, – I think he's somewhere in the middle of those two statements over the year as his role in the future. But Spurs would be stupid if they did anything without Victor's prior knowledge. I mean, that, w- that would be just outlandish and, and crazy to think that, at the very least, uh, Victor will know before anybody else what they're about to do. He should. I mean, <laughs> why Why would you not want that to be the case? Why would anybody be opposed to that in any way, shape, or form? He should have complete and total authority. I wouldn't say veto power, but mm-hmm. complete and total influence is maybe the best way to put it. 